Hello, Global Thinkers. Welcome back on Think Bricks. Today, we are talking about Saudi Arabia's new role in Bricks. The Crown Prince's recent statement is set to shape geopolitics, and we will explore why it's so impactful. Stay tuned and don't forget to follow us on social media. Links are here in the description. See you after the clip. Listen carefully. I think that Europe is the new Middle East. The Arab Saudi Arabia in the five years of the past سوف تكون مختلفة تماما البحرين سوف تكون مختلفة تماما الكويت حتى قطر على خلافنا معهم لديهم اقتصاد قوي سوف تكون مختلفة تماما بعد خمس سنوات الإمارات عمان لبنان الأردن مصر العراق والفرص التي لديها إذا نجحنا في الخمس سنوات القادمة سوف تلتحق فينا دول أكثر وسوف تكون النهضة القادمة في العالم في ثلاثين سنة القادمة في الشرق الأوسط إن شاء الله هذه حرب السعوديين هذه حربي اللي أخوضها شخصيا ولا أريد أن أفارق الحياة إلا وأرى الشرق الأوسط في مقدمة مصاف في العالم وأعتقد أن هذا الهدف سوف يتحقق مئة في المئة الله يعطيك طول العمر سيدي الله سعودي أوريبيز ريسنت أدميشن إنتو ذا بريكس ألينس represents a pivotal geopolitical shift. This analysis will examine the significance of Saudi Arabia integrating into BRICS across economic, political, environmental, and social dimensions. It will assess how Saudi Arabia's motivations align with BRICS objectives and the implications for major stakeholders like the United States. Providing background on BRICS evolution and Saudi Arabia's strategic goals, this analysis aims to evaluate whether BRICS expansion signals a new multipolar global order or merely symbolic posturing between emerging powers. BRICS originated in 2009 as a bloc of major emerging economies seeking to increase collaboration on financial and sustainability issues outside Western-dominated institutions like the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. This coalition of rising powers with a combined GDP over $27 trillion, aims to challenge the unipolar dominance of the US-led global order. Saudi Arabia formally applied to join BRICS in 2022, coinciding with deteriorating Saudi-US relations under the Biden administration and perceived declining American interest in the Middle East. Meanwhile, Saudi ties with Russia and China have steadily strengthened in recent years, with its adherence approved Saudi Arabia is set to participate in BRICS summits and initiatives from 2024. Saudi Arabia has long been a key player in global politics, mostly because of its massive oil reserves. But the world is changing and relying solely on oil is like putting all your eggs in one basket. So Saudi Arabia is looking to diversify, and joining BRICS could be a golden ticket. This move isn't just about economics, it's a strategic chess play. Saudi Arabia and the United States have been close allies for years, but that relationship is going through a rough patch. The US wasn't too happy when Saudi Arabia cut its oil production, worsening inflation they'd signed. In response, the US government even proposed a bill that could threaten Saudi Arabia's security. Well, every action has a reaction. And in geopolitics, that reaction can be seismic. If Saudi Arabia joins BRICS, it's not just a win for them, it's a win for the entire lands. Why? Because Saudi Arabia brings something to the table that is more valuable than oil. Its strategic location. Nestled between Asia, Africa and Europe, Saudi Arabia is a geographical gold mine. This could open up new trade routes and strengthen the alliance's global influence. For Saudi Arabia, BRICS membership accelerates its economic diversification goals under Vision 2030 by attracting investment, partnerships, and financing for mega-projects from BRICS states. It provides the Saudi channels to amplify its influence over global oil markets and production agreements as a leader of OPEC+. Politically, alignment with Russia and China grants Saudi diplomatic backing beyond reliance on its traditional U.S. partnership. For BRICS countries like China and Russia, Saudi Arabia is a strategic gateway to the Middle East and the Islamic world, and 
as noted above, a counterbalance to U.S. domination and the dollarized oil market. However, there may be friction between Saudi Arabia's autocratic political model and the democracies of India and Brazil. If Saudi Arabia moves closer to BRICS, what happens to its relationship with the U.S.? Well, it's complicated. The U.S. has military bases in Saudi Arabia and they have been allies for decades. But alliances aren't set in stone, they evolve. And right now, the U.S.-Saudi relationship is at a crossroads. If Saudi Arabia joins BRICS, it could tip the balance, forcing the U.S. to rethink its Middle East strategy. This could lead to a shift in alliances, affecting not just these two nations, but the other Middle Eastern countries as well. And it will not only about military and geopolitical relationships, it will be even worse on the economic side. In fact, in the context of the destruction of the Bretton Woods system, Saudi Arabia's accession to BRICS is a key event, even more important than the accession of Iran. One of the pillars of the Bretton Woods system is its oil supply, more precisely the provision of commodity exchange trading, which takes place in dollars, the so-called oil deal of the century between the US and the Saudi Arabia, better known as petrodollar, that has been in place for more than 40 years. In brief, the gist of it is that Saudi Arabia commits to sell oil exclusively for dollars, thus providing liquidity to the US currency. The U.S. instead guarantees its military support. Of course, the dollar is not solely dependent on oil trading. However, exchange trading in the world market is one of the main pillars of maintaining the sustainability of U.S. trade. Roughly speaking, to buy oil, real or on paper, you have to buy a dollar. Given the fact that oil represents the major part of all commodity trading, the dollar rule de facto applies to the other items as well, simply because it doesn't make any sense for you to constantly change currencies losing interest on commissions. It is much easier and more expedient to trade in the reference currency, that is, the dollar. Riyadh is still committed to the oil deal of the century. Paradoxically, even in China, the Saudis sell oil for dollars, although there is no economic sense in this. But time changes. At Davos in January, Finance Minister Mohammed Al-Jadan revealed Riyadh's willingness to trade not just in yuan, but also a variety of other currencies. For example, Saudi Arabia exports 25% of its crude oil to China, but only 7 to the United States. The share of total exports to China is 20% and to the United States just over 5%. At the same time, Riyadh buys only 7.5% of its products from America, while from China, buys 22%. Logically, in this situation, it would be much easier to convert trade with China into yuan. Riyadh would receive yuan for its oil, with which it would buy products from China, and trade with the United States would continue in dollars. And what would happen if Saudi oil went to China for yuan? For one sole tanker, while it would sail to the shores of China, there will be about 100 virtual tankers which would be sold and bought. But again, for Yuan, one can only imagine how much liquidity the dollar would be deprived of. But most importantly, it would have caused a chain reaction. Exchange trading would have moved away from the dollar, which would no longer make any sense. Consequently, there would be a partial devaluation of the dollar, which would move more and more back to the US borders. And the world would switch to other currencies in international settlements. Of course, this topic is more profound and has many nuances. For example, the fact that exporting Russian oil to China for rubles, yuan, will not yet have the same effect as a similar mechanism with Saudi Arabia, due to a number of factors, one of which is the need to form a Russian oil benchmark, a rubble price for Urals, not tied to brand. But this is only one of the options. To summarize, Saudi Arabia's accession to BRICS will mean Riyadh's withdrawal from the oil deal of the century. That is, oil will cease to be traded for dollars not only by the Saudi Arabia, but also by the entire OPEC. 
United Arab Emirates is following suit here. After that, most transactions in US currency, including on the stock exchange, will lose all meaning. Consequently, the dollar will become less liquid and demanded asset. So, what does Saudi Arabia do? It starts looking for new friends, and BRICS could be that friend. Joining this alliance could give Saudi Arabia more leverage on the global stage and reduce its dependence on the US. But it is not just about Saudi Arabia. BRICS countries also have something to gain. They are trying to create new financial centers to challenge US-dominated institutions like the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Adding Saudi Arabia to the mix could give this alliance more credibility and strength. Now let's talk numbers. Saudi Arabia's economy is closely linked to oil. On average, oil made up 75% of the country's budget revenues from 2010 to 2020. This peaked at 93% in 2011 and dropped to 53% in 2020 due to reduced global oil demand from the COVID-19 crisis. As you can see, that's a lot of reliance on black gold. Saudi Arabia is keenly aware that the global shift toward clean energy necessitates changes in its oil-dependent economy. To adapt, the country has launched Vision 2030, a plan focusing on economic diversification, including investment in solar energy and tourism. Joining BRICS could fast-track these efforts, as member nations like India and China are already pioneers in renewable energy. This alliance could mutually benefit Saudi Arabia and BRICS, aligning the environmental objective. Beyond oil, Saudi Arabia faces unique challenges such as water scarcity. About 80% of its 37 million population lives along the west coast, putting pressure on resources. The country operates some of the world's largest water desalination plants, which ironically rely on oil and gas. This creates a dilemma as continuous oil extraction has environmental repercussions and contradicts BRICS's sustainability goals. Vision 2030 also aims to boost tourism, but this comes with its own hurdles. To attract Western tourists, Saudi Arabia may need to relax some traditional religious laws, a move that could create internal tensions. Membership in BRICS, a coalition with diverse cultural norms, could influence Saudi society in various ways. The kingdom has already initiated moderate social reforms to attract tourism and talents, and BRICS could further shape these methods. Really, um, I mean, Vision 2030 was a breakthrough in the way Saudi think about the economy, the social fabric, the fiscal even discipline. And it is a very wide reaching, so it includes you know, economic diversification, fiscal you know, reforms, and social reforms. And, and Kristalina touched on some of these. But what is really important about Vision 2030 when it comes to the global you know, uh, discussion is the long-term plans and the commitment actually to execute in that long-term plans. And the long-term investments that are happening in Saudi we are also looking at our region, and we want it to be a role model for the region. And we are encouraging a lot of the countries around us to really do reform. And we are changing the way we provide assistance and development assistance. According to the OECD, Saudi is ranking number one in the official development assistance when it comes to GNI. And we used to give direct uh, grants and deposits without strings attached, and we are changing that. We are working with multilateral institutions to actually say we need to see reforms. Yep. We are taxing our people. We are expecting also others to do the same, to do their efforts. We want to help, but we want you to also to, to do your part. So in, in short, there is a lot of work that is being done to insulate Saudi economy, but also to help the global economy. Mm -hmm. With the largest Arab economy, Saudi Arabia provides economic help to BRICS. Bilateral trade with BRICS states, especially China, is substantial and set to rise. Saudi Arabia may utilize BRICS financial channels more, like the New Development Bank, diminishing reliance on Western-led institutions. 
Greater use of local currencies for oil trade between BRICS members can further erode the dollar's dominance. However, stark economic differences between Saudi Arabia's state capitalist structure and BRICS mixed models could curb cooperation. Questions remain whether concrete gains will emerge beyond aspirational rhetoric. But enabling Saudi diversification and job growth through BRICS investment and know-how transfer as a shared priority. Saudi Arabia's potential BRICS entry could reshape global power dynamics, touching on economics, politics and the environment. Yet the challenges remain, including different political systems and values. Before we move on to more intriguing topics, a quick reminder. If you want to stay updated on geopolitics and emerging markets, let's hear from you. What are your thoughts on Saudi Arabia's move and its ripple effect? Your insights matter to us, so drop a comment below. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and click the follow button on our social platforms. The links are right there in the description. Stay curious, stay with us, and let's meet in the next video. Thanks for watching.